turn in your Bibles this morning to Exodus chapter 13. We're going to be looking in verses 17 through 22 this morning. And it came to pass when Pharaoh had led the people, let the people go that God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, lest peradventure the people repent when they see war and they return to Egypt. But God led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea and the children of Israel went up harnessed out of the land of Egypt. And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for he had straightly sworn the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and ye shall carry up my bones away hence with you. And they took their journey from Succoth, and encamped in Etham, in the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. He took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of the fire by night from before the people. The value of a long journey is what we're going to talk about here in just a few minutes. Everybody likes pizza. I can bring up pizza and probably get your attention. I believe we all probably have the phone number to the pizza place on our refrigerator under the magnet at home. And I, I'm sure we've tried them all looking for the best one. And we go to the places that can get it to you fast and maybe get it to you kind of cheap. And that's one kind of pizza. But there is nothing like a, a genuine Italian pizzeria and the pizza that that you get from there. Don't do that very often. Don't have that very often. But I know it's a whole lot different. It's a totally different ball game. Totally different stage of pizza, right down to the dough. We don't think about the dough of the pizza a whole lot. It's the foundation. It is, it is underneath all of the good stuff. But that dough, I'm telling you, this is not a dough that is frozen and pre-cut and pre-cooked and pre-shaped and automatic. You take this dough from a real pizzeria and you, you slam it down on the table and you, you, you roll it out and you, you mash it out and you work it all over and you, you get it just like you want it. And man, that dough goes through a whole lot. Poor dough. You don't even think about that. You just think about the good stuff. You think about the pepperoni and you think about the beef and, Extra sauce is what my family always has to have and the cheese and the Parmesan cheese and you got to have the mushrooms. I'm getting someone in disagreement here, but you got to have mushrooms. I'm sorry. And you got to have the tomatoes to go with it. And that's all you think about. Give me the good stuff. I want the I want the good stuff, the ingredients. When I'm trying to cut down on a little bread, I'll just I'll just rake that stuff right off of the bread and I'll just eat the toppings. And that's what we focus on. You know, you can't get all of that good stuff, though, until the dough is ready to receive it. You got to have the dough beaten and battered and broken up and, and all ready. And then, then you just put those toppings on there and you've Got it right where you want it. Kind of reminds me of the Christian in some ways. Because we want 
the, the fullness and the richness of all the blessings of God. We want His complete goodness in our lives. We want our cup running over. We want it very quickly. And we want it now. And, and we can even get into our minds of expecting just the fullest measure of what God can give, give to me. Whatever He has in store for me. I would like to have it all right now. And then there comes about a little confusion sometimes or maybe even a little disappointment whenever we do not receive that. And and that doesn't seem to be going on. We're always blessed. But but concerning the full measure of God's blessings, when that's not happening, we want to ask God why. And maybe it would be by answer from God that the dough is not ready yet to receive it. Okay? The dough is the the foundation and it has to be in place and it has to be ready. It has to be prepared. We're going to take a look at the children of Israel tonight. And they were out in the wilderness. Do not mistaking what we're going to talk about this morning as the 40 years in the wilderness due to their lack of belief. That's not the wilderness that we're going to share today. What we're talking about is the exit of the children of Israel out of bondage in Egypt immediately when that took place. We're talking about a wilderness way that they were taken in. And if you'll look with me in the beginning of verse 17, let us share for a little while the desired path. And it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go that God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. There was a popular common shortcut. If you were going to go from Egypt to Palestine, there was a main thoroughfare. There was the main road that you would go down. It's right there in front of them. And that's the way that the children of Israel probably assumed that they would be traveling. It was the natural path. There were other paths, but that usually just wasn't in question. We are going to take the shortest point from point A to point B to get to where we needed to go. It appeared to the children of Israel that this is the quickest, this is the easiest way to get there. I'm sure they thought that. That's the route we would have definitely wanted to take. Because I know how we are today. We want instant gratification. We want things fixed right now. We want things just as fast as they could possibly get in place for us. We want to get from point A to point B as smoothly as we possibly can experiencing all the blessings of God and just be flowing as smooth as we're able to do and and maybe even be so easy we can multitask along the way from point A to point B and let everything just work out great. Let's take this easy way and let us go quickly. Let it be with ease. This is the desired path for us. In our daily walk, naturally speaking, and the things we want, we just want it to go smooth. And and that's the way we even want things spiritually. I know that you're talking about some dough here, but I want the good stuff. Come on, give me the good stuff and give it to me now. I want it yesterday. It needs to be here. Well, God led them not through the way of the land 
of the Philistines. God did not choose the natural path. God chose the long way. God chose the longer journey for the children of Israel to get from point A to point B. There was a sea over here. And there's some wilderness over here. And here's this easy way right here. Looks easy to me anyway. And God takes them around through a less desirable path. A path that seems like it's going to be a little harder on them. As in you can imagine them possibly saying, can I ever get a break? Just... Just one break. Can something just go easy just this one time? We've been in bondage and we've been in slavery all this time. Could it just ease up just this one time? Can I get one easier occasion? The children of Israel could have been thinking, you know, we've been bound in slavery all this time. And, and does the exit have to be like this? Does it have to be the way of so many challenges? They assumed that the normal way would be the quickest, easiest way. The way it had been in the past, maybe. And it's the best way, they might assume. We think we know the best way and the blessed way for us. Sometimes before we even ask God. We have a desired path. We have our desires without ever even talking to God about it sometimes. Look at the end of this verse. As God took them out of the way, the undesirable way for them. For God said, lest peradventure the people repent when they see war and they return to Egypt. If God would have led the children of Israel in the normal way that you would go, if God would have led the people in the way expected by them probably, they would have been confronted with battle from some furious, fiery Philistines who are ready to fight. Israel had been in bondage. They were probably toting around more utensils for carrying food or something of that nature than weapons. They were not fit for war at that time. It would have been a train wreck. Israel had been in slavery mode, not in soldier mode, okay? And God knew that. They were unfit. The sea and the wilderness was a much more agreeable path for them to go down. They couldn't see it. They didn't know. But God knew. And when you consider what was in the normal path and God taking that other path with them, it was going to be much better on them. The low road was not the desired road. They wanted the high road. We want the high road. Well, the high road would have been tragic for the people of God. The Lord detours us from what we think is the best way sometimes. And we may feel deprived when it's actually God's generous bestowing of His grace upon our lives when the journey's long and when the journey's hard. You feel put aside when the Lord is actually protecting you in many situations. I know we have a desired path. I know 
that when when we're in a self mode, we're we're going to want that desired path. Usually. What we desire, usually what we desire. Is not going to be what God desires for us. We can't see it the way he does. So it's not going to be a desired path. Let, let, let's move on from that. We're, we're there, we've got this, but let's look at an acquired path. In verse 18, but God led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea, and the children of Israel went up harnessed out of the land of Egypt. If God would have led them down the common caravan road that everyone usually goes down, if they would have gone down the road that was right in front of them and looking so simple and and what they would want, I, I deserve this after all the bondage I've been through. Let's just take easy street. If God would have done that, they would have been engaged unprepared. They would have became discouraged. They would have became rebellious and God's people would have went back to Egypt. God knows. They would have missed the experience of the power of the Lord. He parted the sea for his people. His people went through and then he pulled the waters back in and it destroyed Pharaoh and his army. They would have missed that experience. There are things that you and I might accumulate on easy street. We want to accumulate the blessings of God on easy street. But there's things you can only acquire down the wilderness way. So there is a value in a long journey for God's people. God spared them from a battle that would have taken them out. And as we consider this, and as we think about what God did for them when he knew they were overmatched, it doesn't mean he pampered them as they went around it the other way. There were trials they had to face the other way. It wasn't the smoothest path for them to be on. There were things that they had to go through. And, and, and I'll just interject in a, a moment that as we, as we think about the path we're on and as we look at some of the difficulties, could you just stop and maybe imagine that it's God's grace and that it could be so much worse? I don't see how things could get any worse. That's not a wise statement. Someone I know used to say, I think things could be worse. I just don't see how. And that's that's a little better. They wouldn't they wouldn't go all the way, but at least they would say that. And and we must consider that down the wilderness way. There were trials on the alternate route that God sent them down. But they were a measure of trials tailor made for God's child that they might bend a little bit, but they would not break. That'll make you think about God's personal interest in your life. Your trials are of are of a particular detailed way that they've come about for you and for me. If you have questioned the turns and the winding roads in your life, consider your father of mercy taking you through those exact 
problems and pressures. They are just of that certain degree to make you and to mature you into someone that praises the Lord and worships Him and glorifies His name, though you might be on the low road instead of the high road. He's making something out of you and I. He's making us worth something as we go through everything we go through. I'm not saying God has caused everything. He has allowed many things for whatever reason. Some things, let's not mistake, are self-inflicted due to self causing these things, but things come about in different ways. But just understand that God is measuring it all out and he is sending you through it. And it's ultimately going to be for a molding of your life. It would have been so unkind of God to send Israel down the normal path. What they thought might have been great. The best thing that could happen. God knew that it was the worst thing for them. God knew what they needed. God gave Israel exactly what they needed. You know what they needed? Yes, I better come up with something then. They needed experience with the Lord. There's nothing that can replace experience. I I thought in the very beginning of my Christian life, it was all in just the study and learning of God's word. No, you've you've got to there's got to be life experience laced into what you learn. There has to be experience with the Lord in life. We study, we learn, we gather together and we go out and we live in the truth of God and we walk with him and we have experience. That is what the children of Israel needed. They needed a time to shed the bondage of slavery and become soldiers. They needed to be disciplined for war. They needed to grow in faith. They needed to gain courage to face the enemy. And God knew it wasn't time. God was keeping their very condition as a great concern. And he was in a great work with them. Being God's people as for us. I know what we want. But we need training. We need to be developed. We need character. And we need strength as the children of God. And and sometimes the only way that these things are going to be acquired is in the wilderness way. It's going to be a long journey sometimes. The quickest way is not the best way. We think we know the best way. We want the safest way. We want the shortest way. But God has the surest way. We can trust Him. We need experience with God. And experience with God is a result of enduring the trials with God. And trials with God make you and I humble before God. And being humble before God makes you and I reverent to God. And then we are initiated into the experience of really understanding that we're nothing without God. It's it's not lip service. I was basically taught 
in the beginning of my Christian life that I'm nothing without God and I can't do a thing without God. I had someone teach me that over and over, just constantly trying to deflate my tires and and get rid of my self sufficiency and and I learned that I learned that Christian lingo pretty quick. I'm a rotten wretched sinner and there's nothing good about me. Brand new Christian saying that. That was impressive to a lot of people. Look what this guy knows. No, I didn't know it yet. I'd heard it. And I believed it was the truth. But to really worship God, to really have an attitude for worship, to for Him to really be all and everything to you and I, It comes through experience. And it's going to be in the wilderness that we get the rich, deep, learning, changing, conforming, transforming experience of really knowing that we're nothing without God. And all our temptations... As we fall and as we fail, we learn to stop trying and to really start trusting the Lord. We're not trying to dig ourselves out of this hole. We are not going to be trying to fix things in our own ability. We're really going to lean on heaven upon the one who saved us. We're really going to depend upon him. As the experience gets sweeter and sweeter. And he becomes everything to you and I. See this today. That though you are beaten or have been beaten. You're flattened and you're rolled out and you're just tossed in the air. And you seem to be getting worn out by the wilderness state that you're in. If you will accept it from God. Then you're going to walk closer with Christ. You are going to see Christ more clearly in your life. And you're going to love him more deeply. You're going to love Him. And you're going to really serve Him. He's your Lord. And you're going to trust Him with everything. Then, then, even in the wilderness, even on the low roads, we're going to consider ourselves delivered. In the middle of disappointment, there's delivery. That's what the psalmist said. That's what David said. He was in the midst of battles and the enemy was around him. And he talked about deliverance as though it was in the past tense and already happened and it hadn't. But he trusted the Lord with it. We're going to be satisfied though we're suffering. I guess things could be worse. But I don't see how. That would have been an accurate statement if the children of Israel would have made that. Because here they are in the wilderness and they can't, they're, they're envying, they're desiring the other path, but they can't see how much worse it is. And they probably had that attitude at the time. God's purpose in this message is for us to trust that He is protecting us by His providence. I've, I've shared this story with the teenagers I know many times. I've shared it at the villas. I don't believe I've shared it with you. And I don't want to go across this big word providence and have us try to chew that up and not even be able to, to stomach it. There was a preacher... And he, he lived in the southern United States. I believe it was Alabama. 
maybe Georgia. He liked the South. Everything was going smooth. It was kind of an easy street season he was in. And he liked it. And he was actually came to a place of comfort. He, he liked where he was and what he was doing. He was pastoring the church down there. And he wasn't a real popular preacher. He didn't get called for revivals a whole lot or anything like that. But he got a phone call from Maine. Somebody tell me where Maine is. Pretty close south, huh? North, east, can't go any further in the United States. And there's Maine. He gets a call from Maine. Can you fill in and preach for us, sir? How do you know me? Who are you? In his mind and in his thoughts, he said, no, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. But he was impressed within. He was really, really impressed and persuaded they ought to go to Maine and preach a sermon for this, these people in this church. They're going to fly me up there. Sure, why not? He goes up there and he preaches. Goes back home. Bring. Hey, pastor, can, can you come up again and preach for us again this Sunday? And he's thinking, no. But within, he's got to say yes. And he does. And he preaches for him again. Comes back home. Bring. Pastor, we don't have a preacher here. We want to consider you. We want to, you to come in view of a call to be our pastor. And he thought, no way. That's what was going on in his mind. But within was an uncontrollable conviction that you go. And so, so really unwillingly, he, he goes and he preaches in view of a call. And he comes back home. Bring, pastor, we want you to be our preacher. It is you. We all feel it. It was unanimous, pastor. Come be our preacher. No, he's thinking. But God said, yes. Bye-bye, sweet Sal. And he's up in Maine, the United States. What in the world is he doing there? He's thinking, I know God laid it on me to be here, and that's why I'm here. Not too much later, his, uh, the preacher's wife, she, uh, a disease that she had, it, it surfaced and they, they knew she had something and she went to the doctor and she got checked out. I, I've met this preacher, by the way. I know a lot of people that, that know him and, and, um, and, and so they went to the doctor and he got his wife checked out and she had something rare. She had something serious. And the best treatment for her disease was 30 minutes from the church in Maine where he went to pastor. The providence of God. What he, what he was paving for them, he's paving for you and I. And he's sending us down the best road possible. He's not giving us what we want, but he's giving us what we need if we will trust him. The problems on our path, they are precise and they have a purpose. And we may never understand it till we get to glory. But you can believe that if you're living your life in the will of God. And you can trust that he's molding you into what he wants you to be. Think about Think about how you have winter and then you have summer. I'd like you to try to picture your plants growing and, you, and your flower bed flourishing if we went from winter right into summer. Let me tell you something. I don't have a green thumb like some of you around here, but I know it wouldn't do very good. We have spring. We leave winter and we come into spring and there's the warmth. I don't know what's happening in my bones, but it sure feels better in the warmth now. As much as I've complained about the heat, it's agreeing with my body. And, and so anyway, that you have the warmth and your plants start to grow. And they start looking good. It looks like they're just, they're just wanting that flower to bloom out. They're ready. 
because this, this little spell of warmth came through. But then you have your shorts on that day, then you're putting a coat on the next day. And it's cold. And it looks as though your plants are paralyzed. And all of that good production has stopped. The roots were growing. And, and the, the stems were strengthening. And it seems as though they've stopped. When the whole time it was the exact preparation and the exact pressures that these little beautiful plants needed to be able to grow. They were being prepared for the scorching sun of summer so that they could survive. Can you, can you, can you place that in your life? Can you see that that's what's happening with you and I? Maybe this is just leading you to be refreshed in a truth that you already know. Or, or maybe you're seeing that you must rethink why our desires, the desired path is delayed. It's because God is first going to lead you and I down an acquired path. For our good. Let, let's look. Let's go to verses 20 and 21. And, and let's look at an inspired path now. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way. And by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. And he took not away the pillar of the cloud by day. Nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. You led by that pillar today. How about that cloud? No, it's, it's not that way today. But we have the light of God's word that leads us. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The, the leadership of the Holy Spirit is guiding us today. And very faithful to do so. I believe I will trust in this inspired path that God has for us. No matter which road it takes me on. He leads me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Isn't it wonderful to know that your God is with you. He's going with you no matter where you go. Whether you think He's there or not, that is irrelevant. He is right there with you and He will not leave you nor forsake you. And wherever you are living in the will of God, God's up to something good. And He's up to a, a work in your life. There is a valuable, long journey that you and I are on. By the way, Israel faced those Philistines down the road when they were prepared and when they were made ready by God. Let's go ahead and start closing. And um, let's look at an inquired path. Jesus said, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Do you hear that? What Jesus is saying, he is inquiring about a possible different path that he might be able to take than to go to the cross. God didn't have his precious son there in heaven and just keep him there and say, just do what I say. He is your salvation. Believe in him. God didn't just say that, but He sent His Son. He, he sent Him for us. He sent Him into this world on a long journey. When you've been in heaven forever, 33 and a half years on this life is a long journey. And He, he not only had a journey here, and He was sent here, but He was sent here to suffer. He, he suffered for every single one of us. He suffered the cross. He went to Calvary for you and I. And He spilled His blood. And He, he, he let them crucify Him on a cross. He was 
sacrificed for every single one of us. And why should we have it better? Why should we have our planned path that we desire? There was an acquired path that God sent His Son on for us. Shall we take an acquired path trusting what God is doing in our lives? I pray you're encouraged, Christian. I pray you're refreshed on a truth and you're ready to to buckle down and let the Lord take you through it all. Nobody has what it takes to do that. Not in a way that's pleasing to God and honors God if, if they have not been born again. If you, if you have attended church, if God gets just whatever time of attendance and some acknowledgement that, that you just feel like doing, that's, that's not going to do it. This is a tall order, I know. And I'm not, don't act like the preacher's up here preaching like he's fulfilled it all. We're all a work in progress. But I'm progressing because of the grace of God. Because I know Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. I know I'm going to heaven one day. What about you? Because there's no way we're going to walk on this path. If we don't know Jesus. Would you trust Him this morning? Would you be saved? Would you know that you're saved? I don't want to go on and on. But I just got to say. And I don't mean to be rude or anything, but it just almost tickles me when I ask someone if they believe in Jesus and they're going to heaven, and then they tell me what their religion is. Well, I'm a... You fill in the blank. You know what my next question is? What does that mean? It sounds like you're in opposition to... This precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that gave His life for you, who says if you will trust in Him, He will give you eternal life. Religion is so confusing. A relationship with Jesus Christ, it's very well known within you. Because you make peace with God when you're justified by not not works, but faith. Do you experience that peace that passeth all understanding? Are you holding on to something religious? Or do you walk with Jesus and talk to Him every day and He lives within you and He's forgiven your sins and you're no longer guilty? Uh-uh, you, you're not going to make me guilty. I'm washing the blood of Jesus Christ. I've trusted Him. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. Are you saved this morning? We're, we're going to pray. And, and then it's your time. It's your time with God. It's not a show. It is, it is your time as God has moved on you. And maybe you were saved in this service. Would you, would you tell God's people? They're not going to make fun of you. They're going to rejoice with you. That a soul has been saved. Let us pray. Father in heaven, Lord, we come to you today. And Lord, it's, it's so, hard to, so hard to come to a close of, of a service where your people are here and joyful and we're worshiping you but dear God Lord what are the fruit that you're going to bring about today what have you brought about today we thank you for it dear God whatever you've done here Lord we thank you for your eternal salvation that is found on the the calendar of our lives we can look back and we know when we were changed forever. I love you, Lord, and I I thank you for your salvation. 
I thank you for your grace and your mercy. I want to thank you for anything you've done to help us today, dear God. And for moving on the hearts of people by your word, by the power of your truth. In Jesus' name, amen.